Paulina has been a champion on our campus in terms of pushing transfer forward as a counselor and as our transfer director. When our president came onto our campus, he asked her to lead a task force. And so I think that that's really what pushed a lot of our work forward. From that task force, it really brought in all stakeholders on our campus. Prior to that, she was involved in working with a lot of our faculty members in developing cohorts to really pilot what would um, moving students through the two-year timeline. But with the transfer uh, task force, we realized that in order for us to continue a transfer receptive culture or to create that, we needed to have investments. And we needed to have a lot more stakeholders and not just the counseling department or a few administrators leading the charge. And with that, we um, embedded a lot of, it was at the same time with equity dollars. So we really used that to uh, fund a lot of the programs. And I'm not sure if you wanted to kind of expand on that, but we did a lot of work with equity in terms of taking some of the ideas from um, our task force and expanding them. And so Laura oversees equity, so we're partners, we're a team here. <laughs> and uh, transfer equity has been really a priority on our campus uh, for the last few years. And so many of the uh, practical um, embedded practices within our institution that have allowed to develop that transfer culture uh, that started with the task force is, number one, we started a transfer committee on campus uh, within the shared governance um, process. And so that voice for transfer students is always present. Um, in terms of general practices, um, transfer begins on day one. And so orientation is embedded with transfer from day one. You heard about from Laura the cohorts that we've developed that are transfer focused for different um, students um, across campus. Uh, through equity, we've been able to uh, infiltrate, I would say, our new faculty institute. And so transfer is at the front and uh, at the center of the training and onboarding of even faculty. So we do our best to look at every um, portion of our campus and see how we can embed transfer within all of those ranks so that we are uni uh, uniformly working toward achieving that uh, embedded goal of transfer and making it very apparent for our students from day one, from the time they walk in, that we are a transfer institution. So we also, this is an area that we've also been really working on for our students. And so when we first started doing the equity projects, we looked at our data of students and we saw that many of them were coming to our campus and for workforce certificates, um, but they kept returning. And we wanted to try to find a way where we could connect them to transfer. At the same time, the state of California was also allowing um, community colleges to participate in bachelor programs. So it was, it was that perfect timing to really let um, our students know that there is that opportunity for them to move forward with their careers. And we were seeing it anecdotally with students coming back because they wanted to upskill or to move forward within their careers. So one of the things that we've been doing is working a lot with the uh, um, workforce CTE programs. Um, the first thing that we did was tr in our new student orientation is put forward a career assessment because the other thing that we found is that a lot of students were taking CTE certificates because they needed a job. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes they were not getting employed in those fields or coming back for other areas. So we really wanted to help students understand what their interests and their skills and how that connected to a major. So that's one of the very first things that we did. Uh, so now all students onboarded through our um, process will go through the career assessment. I think the second thing that we've done is under Paulina's leadership is having our counselors have that understanding of what the CTE certificates look like. Mm -hmm. So they, the workforce team did a whole presentation with the counseling faculty and that's also within the guide of the guided pathways as we're moving towards guided pathways. It's also part of the work that we're doing. But I think it's really trying to see how we could help students see that you may come in for a certificate or to get a job, but how do we translate that to transfer? How do we connect them to bachelor's degrees? Because we recognize that even if a student comes in for automotive, that if they want to move into their industry or to have their own 
company that they may need to go on for a bachelor's degree or on to a master's. And so I think that, that those are some of the areas that we've been working on. A few other uh, approaches that we've taken is where we actually um, identify students at certain um, benchmarks of their journey, uh, 15 units, um, 30 units, 45 units. We do what we call is a lot of in-reach. And so we target those students and we bring them in and we talk about their possibilities. Uh, we use a peer mentoring uh, model because students, we could talk to them, but if they see someone who is just transferred to the university um, and that looks like them and are closer in age, they respond a little more. I, I don't like that, but oh well. <laughs> I feel young inside. Um, anyway, um, we use a peer mentoring model. Uh, we also expose them th uh, to our partnership programs. We have multiple uh, summer transfer partnership programs where students live on campus, uh, they, at the university, they, uh, for a few days or a few weeks. Um, they get exposure. They recognize that they are, um, they have the ability and the capacity to to move forward. Um, you know, we introduce them to the the opportunities, and we show them uh, by mentors that it is possible for them to continue. Um, another thing that we do is we have a part of what we call Greater Outcomes East LA. It's a it's a collective between our um, local LA USD board members, um, our president of our local, very local, like four, four miles away, Cal State Los Angeles, and our, our president. And so in essence, they have gone on tour at all of the elementary and middle schools and high schools, and um, they've spoken to the campuses, the, the parents, about uh, transfer and university attainment. And so it's a community effort from K to 12, and and on you know beyond uh, to the four-year university so we do our best at multiple levels uh, reaching the students reaching the parents and the families we recognize um, because of our um, demographic that we need to recruit families not just students um, and so if we can get the whole family involved then our students are more likely to continue their education and complete so you heard a little about our summer programs and um, in essence, the multiple programs that we have with UCLA, with um, UC Irvine, um, Loyola Marymount, um, and up, up, up and coming UC Berkeley and UC Santa Barbara, um, they're all based on community cultural wealth and critical race theory. It's important for the students to um, understand um, where they are in the process um, and, you know, Actually, East LA College, about 80% of our students are, are Latino and Hispanic. And so leaving the community in, and going into these spaces that um, are not always, um, you know, the framework of these institutions that aren't always welcoming to students of color, it's important for our students to be strong and, and know that they are ready to make that transition and thrive, and they do. They do when they get there. Um, from uh, in terms of um, our campus itself, uh, everything that we do is with the lens, and I love the the lens uh, thing that we're using here for NISTS, is from the lens of the student um, not having any prior knowledge of of higher education in this country, and so it is incredibly important for us. Um, at every level and at every step, um, that that engagement with the student is very clear and concise and not uh, indirectly demeaning, uh, because we can, you know, shut the door on our students so easily with the simple interaction and exchange at the front office, just entering onto the campus. So all of those details are managed in that manner, um, with that kind of um, perspective from all at all levels. Um, the other thing is that um, people often, you know, students do believe that they have the capacity. Um, there are a good number, and of course we have those um, uh, microaggressions that come our way, right? But we counter them with affirmations. Um, but there are things that are not completely understood, like why didn't the student show up? Um, or they, people sometimes make these assumptions that, um, that the student is, it's not a priority, but it's all of the variables outside that we help to create supports for so that they can focus on school. So um, those are just a few tidbits of, of um, building the, the, the peer mentorship um, and uh, the modeling and bringing in families also. We actually offer a family transfer conference. Uh, we uh, 
use the analogy of the most of the parents are first, you know, immigrants. They're immigrants um, to our community in the greater East LA area. And so um, we use the analogy of them leaving their country and taking a risk to make their lives better. And, and here we are, they don't want to let their, their children, their young adult children, leave, you know, 5, 10, 15 miles away. It's a world away. Um, and so we parallel their journey with the student journey, and we talk these in details through and also talk about the financial aspect of, of completing the journey and how life-changing it is. And so when we bring everyone in and build that level of confidence and that network of support, um, we see the shift. We see the shift, and it's, it's amazing. So um, one of the things that I think I'll expand on is the peer mentor in terms of um, self-efficacy, because we really want students to see themselves. Once they, uh, oftentimes what we hear at graduation is students don't want to leave our campus because we have created a support system for them. So we know that it's important for them when they move forward to find that um, same type of community and the commitment. But through the peer mentorship, we, we've seen a shift where students are actually leading and mentoring our first year students. Um, some of the work that we've done with that is that students are exposed to workshops. We've, ho we've housed workshops on our campus with different leading um, faculty members at different institutions, also speakers speaking about community cultural wealth, um, having them um, carry forward that role of the importance of higher education. So you really, see, we've, I think within the last three years, we've really kind of seen this change on our campus. And students are now actually coming to the equity office asking to host their own conferences. Mm -hmm. And it's really, it's been amazing. So last year, our Associated Student Union, most of those students that are in government have the opportunity to go to national conferences where the rest of our uh, campus community of students are not able to participate. So they've housed uh, or they hosted a workshop for students on different topics from leadership to transfer. So it's really amazing to kind of see um, how they've really embraced and embodied uh, that leadership and knowing that it's important for all members of our community to really speak about transfer. One of our other projects is, is that when we look at the university partnership, the peer mentors from UCLA are previous community college students that come back to our campus and they're another role model for students. So it's really, for us, it's about representation. It's about access and representation. So our students are able to see themselves. So they say they went to, they're a dreamer and they're at UCLA. They're a first gen, they're at UCLA. So it's really important that not only do we have the commitment, but we ensure that students are able to see themselves. One of the other areas is having our students participate, not just, we recognize that we cannot afford to send every single one of our students to a summer program, whether it be three days or five days. But what we've also done is expanded um, college awareness days, where we'll take students for the day to go to UC San Diego or whatnot. That really is life-changing for a lot of students. And when they come back, they start advocating. So I think the parent uh, conference came back from a student who went to San Diego and she chose to go to San Diego because she was able to go that day and come back to be with her kids. And she said, you know, and she advocated for us to have a parent um, program. So UCLA did that. They actually, on the very first day, they had students come in with their kids um, to, so that the children would get to see where they were going to be staying. And at the end of their four-day stay at UCLA, they also had uh, their children come to see the, the award ceremony, so ceremony of their parents. So I think that through these programs and opportunities, we have really taken in feedback from students that represent different subpopulations of first-gen students and figured out how can we make it inclusive so that they could see themselves attending. And um, this spring semester, one of our former students who is also a mother started at UC Berkeley. And so we're really excited that they yeah. see that they can take these yeah. uh, huge steps for themselves and for their children. For a lot of us, when uh, we started in this work, it was about building college knowledge, right? So the idea that, and I think, Although college, building college knowledge is important, 
in some ways, it took a deficit mindset in that students were coming without. So Tara Yoso is, um, really has expanded her work on community culture wealth, and it really builds upon what we can bring to the table in terms of language, resiliency, community, family. These are all supports that um, are that add to our experience. And um, so it's the idea that we come with something and it may not be that we understand how to navigate college because we're new to it, but the family support, the language, um, the resiliency, those are things that are gonna add and help us as we move through that journey. I don't know if there's... Next, that's it. Yeah. So, and that's, and I think when Paulina talked about um, the Parent uh, Academy, it's really evident, right? So families have come here in search for a better opportunity for their students. So that really builds upon, you know, if your parents could come here, you can also make that journey to move 300 miles to that school or 100 miles out of your comfort zone. And so to really show our students, you could do it. It's, um, it may, you may be that first person in your family to get that college degree, but you come with so much that is really going to help you excel once you're there at the university. This is one that we discussed as... Yeah, we actually uh, talked about what there is at the national level. And you know, other than NISTS, uh, the college board uh, may be a segment of the college board because uh, community college uh, transfer is not really strongly represented uh, the way we would like it to be. Um, the Cook Foundation, through, through their work and through their amazing transfer scholarship that is life-changing for students, um, there aren't too many national uh, you know, leaders with the focus and emphasis on community college transfer, uh, which is, it makes me a little sad because most of our students who are in poverty, who are students of color, are in our community colleges, overwhelmingly. And so we have a problem there. And we'd like to continue to build on, on the resources that are available to all. Um, and go ahead. So I would say that although there are not, that we don't have national resources, it's important to identify um, change agents. And so for us, I mean, I would say, you know, Paulina is a change agent on our campus, but also Alfred Edera. I mean, I think that he has a legacy of working not just with our campus, but with many community colleges and really has driven forward the importance of community college transfer. Um, so I think that for communities to try to find who are their change agents, who is committed to expanding transfer, they are able to start with that and then identify faculty members or professors on campus that are doing research in this area. Um, so I, those would be, that would be important. And um, I'm trying to think of other. Yeah, actually, um, uh, California is going through this huge transformation and uh, something we've never seen before. It's amazing, but painful because change is hard. And, uh, but it's an incredible opportunity. Uh, but we were speaking earlier about how there was a time that, that we were like in dire straits. There, were, there was no funding, nothing. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I was an employee of the community college uh, in California during that time. Laura was working for the city at city that time. Yeah. yeah, and so um, I actually started a program called Faculty Transfer Advisors. Mm -hmm. And knowing that faculty are on the front line with students, I was a transfer center director with um, two student workers, mm -hmm. and that was it, uh, in the office. And so I reached out and uh, looked for the champions, brought the champions together, and started having sessions. Um, and some of it was, uh, you know, I'm providing peanut butter and jam <laughs> for lunch, or bring your own uh, lunch, but the champions are there. They're within our institutions. And if we can just you know, bring them together, and uh, actually uh, what I created later was a transfer student reception where we celebrated the students who were, had been admitted and were transferring off. But we ga I gave them, or we, I always say we, it was like a one person show for a long time. Um, the students had an opportunity 
to actually um, uh, nominate a classified personnel, a, a faculty personnel, someone who had been in influential in their journey. And initially I thought, how am I going to choose one person to acknowledge? And I thought, we're acknowledging everybody. So it, it became like everyone was a, a part of this celebration. Everyone had been a part of the student's journey. And so they, they embraced it, they owned it, they celebrated that, and, and they continue that. Um, I think our first um, reception was about 15 students and maybe, you know, 20, 20 faculty and, and, um, and um, family members. And now we have over 1,000 showing up to, the, to these events. Mm -hmm. It's like a highlight of the, 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 the academic year. And um, faculty want to be a part of that. And so how do we get them engaged? Uh, in contributing, we all want to be a part of success, right? Student success, especially that—that's what drives us to um, the work that we do. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. 